speak your word O Holy Spirit without your presence, without your help. Help us to speak your word that it may come with power, come with authority, come with the grace to convict, come with the strength of your presence. May you O God help us to speak the truth and as we speak the truth may we be satisfied and filled with every grace and blessing. We make all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us be seated, brothers and sisters. This morning, I have taken my homely to be the mandate of the minister of God. The mandate of the minister of God called the priests. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1 to 4 says, For every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he is bound to offer sacrifice for his own sins, as well as for those of the people. And one does not take the honor upon himself, but he is called by God just as Aaron was. The priest of God has been chosen by God from among men and has received power and authority to do several things. Number one, the power to celebrate the Eucharist, the Holy Mass, which is the principal purpose for his ordination. Number two, to forgive sins. Number three, to administer the other sacraments. Number four, to preach with authority the word of God. Number five, to govern the rest of the faithful in those matters which refer to the kingdom of heaven. Brothers and sisters, the priest is chosen to bring men back to God for he has been trained for this. He has been chosen by, God, by Christ and called by Christ. It is God who has first placed this interest in him. It is God who has placed the desire in him to be his priest, the priest of God. His response confirms this particular interest to become a priest. His call is in twofold, brothers and sisters. The disciples call. Here he is called to become a disciple by going to the seminary. What is he going to the seminary to do? To study, to learn the ways of God then to commune with God and then fellowship with Christ. Now the first call is called the commitment call. That maybe as a mass server, he has been desiring, he has been watching priests, he has been seeing priests and all that. Now he receives a formal commitment. That's the first instance of the call. There he receives formal training. There he learns how to become a fisher of men. The second degree of the call or the dimension of the call is that it is called the commissioning call. There Christ calls him and then empowers him. Matthew chapter 10 verse 1 says to you and I, then he called his disciples to him and then he gave them power and authority. So by the sacrament of sacred ordination to the priesthood, the priest is sent to be a priest of God to the people. His assignment is to stand as a mediator between man and God. Dear brothers and sisters, he does not know everything about the priesthood. That is why he is sent to a senior priest who will guide him and tutor him that he has gained theoretical knowledge about the things of God. Now he has to be on the field learning with the guidance and precision of an elder priest. He gains practical training on how to become a fisher of men. Now the priest, the minister of God, is called into ministry. Remember I've taught you that the word ministry is service. Service. Not to claim any title, but service. And then to go to, he has been sent into mission. And then into mission, that is to go into the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them all that he has been taught by Christ. Through the rector, through the formators, through his lecturers in his seminary. And then he's assured that as he goes into the field of evangelization, 
He is not alone. The grace of the Lord is with him. The spirit of the Lord is with him. The eternal presence of God is with him to the close of the age. And that is why the word of God says that when a priest is being sent, he doesn't come empty-handed. Inside of him, as the word of God tells you and I, in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 14, it says, I will satisfy my priests with abundance. Abundance of what? Graces. Blessings. And what is assignment? Is to discharge, to ensure that the flock of God, the people of God whom he is called to shepherd, are filled with what? With bounty. This is the assignment that every priest who is sent to you does not come, on his, come in his own name. He comes in the name of the Lord. The Bible tells you and I in John chapter 1 verse 6, there was a man sent by God and his name was what? John. What is his assignment? To bear witness to the light. He was not the light, but then become the voice to call out a voice crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight the path of the Lord. The assignment of the priest is to proclaim God. Now, within the parameters and the corridors and boundaries of his training, he has been taught how to live both in scarcity and in plenty. Like St. Paul says, it is the grace of the Lord that sustains him. The one who is called into the priesthood is and must always be with Jesus in order to be effective in ministry. Relationship with God is very, very important for a priest of God in order to be effective in ministry. Otherwise, he will burn out. Otherwise, you become cold and dry. Otherwise, you become ineffective. But being with God, being with Christ, meditating upon the word of the Lord day and night, he becomes fresh every day of his life. To sit quietly at the Lord's feet in silence and meditation. To study the word of God. To commune with Jesus in prayer. This he must do daily, which is called the act of what? Daily consecration in order to be effective in ministry. When you go to the word of God in Joshua chapter 1, you come to hear that Joshua was about to take the mantle of leadership. But then, the Lord had to give him the basic instruction. If he must be successful, if he must be protected, if he must be effective, if he must be effective, he must study the word of God day and night. It is on the strength of this word that his protection comes. On the strength of this word that he's able to nourish the people. On the strength of this word that no man can defeat him. On the strength of this word, he becomes a light. On the strength of this word, he becomes a beacon. On the strength of this word, he becomes a mobile force in order to bring men back to God. That he's not standing alone. There are the company of angels and saints who are called the cloud of witnesses that surround him. And above all else, he is with the presence of the Lord. And that is why Moses understood this. He said, we shall not leave this Mount Sinai if your presence does not go with us. Your presence with us will make a difference. So the priest of God is not alone. The priest of God is with what? The presence of God. He is not called to feel fearful or to become scared of the people of God. He is to stand his ground and then proclaim the word of the Lord. Now there is no substitute to this daily consecration which is necessary for his effectiveness. He must choose a time to always be with the Lord, devoid of every distraction. Yes, he has friends. Yes, he has family. But then he's called to always consecrate himself day and night. Many times, even his family or friends may not understand his assignment. They may say, oh, is this not the little boy we knew this day? Is this not our friend? They want to call him by name. They want, to do, want him to do things that they have been doing before. No, there's not a difference. That now because he has understood the call of God, the field of play has changed. He is called to become a leader of the people. He must study the word of God in order to show himself approved. Says the word of God in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 17. The priest must be knowledgeable in several matters. This is our training. That a priest must always be, will be fresh with knowledge. Day and night, not only studying the word of God, he must study all that matters because he comes across or comes in contact with men of diverse cultures, diverse backgrounds, diverse expectations. He has to meet their needs. Sometimes it is not easy. Sometimes the pressure is heavy. Sometimes he may be weak. Sometimes he may be tired. But then the people of God are saying, Father, pray for us. Father, bless us. Father, hear my confession. Father, please come and deliver. Father, come and do this. But he must always remain in the presence of the Lord. That is why the word of God will say in Psalm 1 verse 1 to 2, it says blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. 
and in, on his law, he meditates day and night. Now the reward for such diligence, for such labor is found in verse 3. He says he is like the tree that is planted by the streams of water that yields its fruit in season, in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The prosperity of the priest is also the prosperity of the people. The health, the spiritual health of the priest is also the health of the people. If the priest is not strong, the people will be weak. If the people, the priest is not envisioned, the people will live in what? Darkness and in total abject, even misery. Because they might think, yes, they have money. They might have influence. But without the guidance of a shepherd, the voice of the priest calling them to order, calling them to hear the word of the Lord, calling them to repentance, calling them to conversion, the people can become what? Wearisome, they can become weary and burdened with the yoke of this world. This is assignment of the priest. Now, as one who is called into public ministry, he must interface with men and women of diverse cultures, diverse cultural backgrounds, with different emotions, different expectations. He must make two preparations every now and then. First, there is a private preparation. There he knocks it out with God. Lord, what are you saying? Lord, what is the word for the people? Then he can spend hours preparing his sermon. Six hours to come and deliver. 20 minutes or 30 minutes homely. In order that the people might be blessed. So that the people do not come to the house of God and become watered. Even while people are complaining. Oh, he spends time. They want to spend less time in the house of God. And spend more time in the things of the world. Lord. The priest says no. There's always a conflict. Now because them to always come back to the Lord. He takes time diligently preparing his word. Preparing the sermon. So that every now and then while he stands, he's leading people line upon line. Precept upon precept. Guiding them upon the word of God. Exposing to them the realities of the word of God in order to bring about conviction. It is the Holy Spirit that convicts men. And through the preparation of the priest in partnership with the Holy Spirit, he brings about the change in the heart of man. When a man comes into the house of God, hearing the word of God, he knows that there is only one power, that all power belongs to the Lord. The Lord has spoken once, twice have I heard that all power belongs to the Lord, that faith cometh by hearing. How will you hear except those who have been sent preach the message? How will they be converted or except they actually obey the word of the Lord? So he takes a priest and the Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 3 verse 15 that for a long time Israel was without the prayer presence of God, was without a teaching priest, was without the laws of God and any generation without these three things is set for what to do. So the assignment of a priest is to bring you close to God. If you have a teaching priest who is guiding you precept of precept, rejoice do not condemn, do not complain because he's expounding your knowledge about God. That every now and then he fails in this assignment, you can hear the first reading, judgment is upon him. Every now and then he waters it. The priest is not ordained to please man. The priest is not ordained to please a man. When you find a priest who is not strong, dilly dally, running from pillar to post, oh, call him, oh, priest of God. This is not your assignment. You are not to run and please anybody. You are a king. Stay in your position. You are a shepherd. Stand in your position. Stand on your watch. You have been discipled. You are called in order to propagate the spreading of the kingdom of God. There are men, there are priests today who are cowed at the presence of riches. This is not what the Lord is calling us to do. Oh, because people actually give priests several things. Oh, they feel they can seize the voice of the priest. No, every time a priest receives gifts, the priest, the gift is to help the priest to advance the work of the Lord, not to silence his voice. He must always speak the word of God every day day, every now and then. And then if there are forces that try to attack him, God deals decisively with those people, even while he's sleeping. That he comes out and then he's fresh. That your positions are gathered around him. God in one way or the other scatters him. When he scatters those things, when he does not understand this particular thing, he will begin to dilly-dally, trying to please man. The Lord has not called him to please anybody. The Lord has called him like a fire entrapped in his bones to proclaim the word of the Lord. To bring men back to the covenant of the Lord. To bring men back to God. The priest must not be partial. He is called a light. 
He must bring light into every environment he comes into. He must always call people to God. But he can only do this when he makes that private preparation. Then he learns how to hear the word of the Lord. Then he knows the ways of God. Then he knows the move of the Lord. He knows that he's not standing alone. Then he knows that the Lord is my shepherd. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He shall not want. For fresh and green pastures, he has led, led you. He has watered you. He has led you and he has anointed your head with oil and your cup shall overflow. Goodness and mercy will always follow the priest because the Lord has filled him with abundance. Every time the priest comes into a parish, he is not coming as one who is posted as a policeman. No, he is called as one sent by God. He has the, the, the treasures of the kingdom of God. Today, who actually open themselves to receive it, they receive it. And that is why St. Paul, speaking to the church in Philippians, says to them, you are partakers of this grace. Now let this grace also rest upon you. That is says in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, may the Lord who has begun this good work bring it to completion in your life. The priest is sent, he receives power in order to bring healing. This is the mandate of the priest. Then he receives a public preparation. The public preparation the Lord teaches him, he has been sent to learn from elder priests. He has seen how God has been working with them. Then he learns how to also come out to speak about the word of God. He has been given power and authority. The power and authority of the priest is number one, to heal the sick. Not to run after big men. Not to run after people who have money. The assignment of the priest is to what? Heal the sick. There are people who are sick in a lady's town the sea. They must be healed. They must be strengthened in order to cast out demons. Those who are oppressed by demonic activity. Remember yesterday, you prayed and he gave them power and authority over what? Unclean spirit and then sickness and every kind of thing. Every unfamiliar thing. This is the assignment of the priest. Number two, he is always to reveal the law love of God to man tell him man that God loves him that there are people who want to commit suicide the voice of the priest is the voice of what reason is the voice that draws men back to God oh man you shall not die oh man you shall live he has been commanded to bless to bless people that not to live in cause that the Lord will bless you in the morning in the afternoon in the evening the evil one shall not anoint your head and the people say amen they are saying amen in confirmation to his declaration which is the prophetic that they must actually enjoy the blessings of the Lord the priest is sent to to teach about God with all diligence and with all knowledge and with the power and authority that God has given to him. The priest is always to prove that God has the power to deliver a man from sin. A man from what? Sickness. A man from demonic possessions and attacks. He's always to lead them to acknowledge that God is the only one. He is the supreme God. He is the Alpha and yet he is what? The Omega. He is the beginning and yet he is the end. To acknowledge that Jesus is the great redeemer. That all powers in heaven and on earth and beneath the earth will bow at the mention of the name of Jesus. This is the assignment of the teaching priest. He is to celebrate the Eucharist with all reverence and diligence. That when the priest celebrates the mass haphazardly, the people will be confused. They will not know their left from right. Like when we came into our ladies' town, they see many people did not understand the moment of the Eucharist. Some will sit down and cross their legs. Some will sit down and begin to do whatever they like. They chew gum. The priest said, no. You may not like what Father Wisdom is doing, but it's to call you to order. To call you to order. You may not like the audacity. You may not like the confidence. Yes, but he's calling you to order. He's calling you to do the right thing that God has called you to do. Then the priest again is to correct false and wrong teachings. Pervading the world. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 to 6 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not worldly, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy every argument and every proud obstacle to the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ and ready to punish every disobedience when our own obedience is confirmed. So the priest of God is to tell people that you believe something wrongly. They were saying a lot of things, but the priest is saying, no, this is not the right way. It is in the Bible. He leads you to understand the word of God as it is said. As a priest, he's not only called to speak, he's also called to lead by example. 
Now, as he leads my example, this is what Jesus was condemning the gospel reading of today, as well as in the first reading. Condemning the leaders of the church, the leaders of the day of his time, that they were hypocritical. Only thinking about pomp and show. The, priest, the Lord is saying to us, that is not what he has called us to do. He says, greatness is not measured by position. Greatness is not measured by title. Greatness is not measured by the, the honor of men. Greatness is measured by service. Greatness is measured by service. This is the assignment for any priest, for any child of God. Your greatness, your influence, your relevance is only great when you serve. Remember, we all are called priests by the virtue of our baptism. You have been called into the priesthood of Christ, into the prophetic office of Christ, into the kingly office of Christ. So you do not say it is only for the priest. It is for all of us who are not doing the work of God as the Lord wills us to do it. Yes, for the minister of God, the priest must always stand upright because a weak priest is a weak church. Praise the Lord. A weak priest is what? A weak church. A strong priest is a what? A strong church. Because he's an intercessor standing in the gap. Just imagine that I'm not doing what I'm doing. Imagine how your faith will be. You become like sheep without a shepherd. Running from one prayer house to another. But it's a voice of reading. Oh, child of God, rise and pray. Oh, child of God, say a big amen. Though you may not like it. Though it's making you comfortable. But as soon as you will understand that it's for your good. That everything the priest is doing is not for himself. It's for your good. We move from one region to another region, preaching about the word of God. Though the people might not understand, though they might complain, but oh, child of God, do not complain. It is for your good. That whatever we're doing here, it is for your good. The prayers on Saturday, the time we do, the time we take in teaching the word of God is for your good. Hear me loud and clear. If we do not do it, the word of God, the first reading judges us. And then, then our grace and our gift becomes a reproach to us. May it never happen that while we are doing the work of God, that our service becomes a reproach to us in the name of Jesus. You must pray for your priest. You do not understand what we go through. You might think, oh, the work of God, the priest is just to celebrate mass. Who has told you that? There are many things. You've heard the mandate. The work is heavy. It's like a burden upon our shoulders. Oh, many people open their mouth and say all kinds of things. Oh, be careful what you say. Because you do not know how we spend our time, how we labor in the house of God. While you are saying things in, the, in your house before your children, dear brothers and sisters, know that your children have heard it and your speaking can actually keep their faith. Then tomorrow you begin to ask yourself, what has happened to my child that he doesn't respect the house of God? You killed it because of what, what you say in your house. As you say the wrong things to your children, oh, this priest, oh, that priest, you are killing their faith. Because before they know it, they will lose interest in the things of God. They will lose interest in the priest. Now what their confidence will be? The world, pop houses, disco. Many of them will begin to smoke. Many of them will begin to take many cracks and all that in as a compensation. But when you tell them, Father has said this, we must do this. You, leading by example, they obey. Then they learn that indeed there must, there's honor in the house of the Lord. There's honor for the priest. Remember, your children need your faith as well. Then the priest of God is never to be afraid. Many things may afraid may make the priest afraid. He is to stand his ground because he's not alone. There are many priests today who are weak. There are many priests today who are confused. There are many priests today who are tired. There are many priests today who are sick and beseech with a lot of things. I pray, may the Lord deliver his priest in the name of Jesus. Say a big amen. amen. May the Lord deliver his priest. For the priest, if he's strong, the people will be strong. The people will be strong. You may not like it. Remember, brothers and sisters, you are Africans. You are not the Western world. You are Africans. And Africans pray. Africans commune with God. Africans work for God. You are not Westerners. Yes, you may experience some kind of cultural shock and all that, but remember your root. You are Africans. Africans have time to commune with the Spirit, commune with God. And this is expressed in the faith. What we are doing today, brothers and sisters, we are doing religion, not Christianity. We are not doing Christianity. We are far from what the apostles of old did, what the early church did. We must return. The Bible says, uh, His Grace, Alf, uh, His Grace, um, um, Alabad Job, the uh, ex-bishop of um, 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 Ibadan Archdiocese, says we must go back to the root. Redire ad fontes. Going back to the basis. 
going back to the catechism, going back to the things of the Lord, to the altar of prayer. America today is calling his children, calling the priests, calling the sisters to return to the voice of prayer. It is the prayer, the voice of prayer that can protect a nation. It is the voice of prayer that can actually bring about the power of God at work in your life. Then you are learning. You must learn the right things. You must be able to expose and place this side by side. What is good about this culture that we can imbibe? What is not good about it? Let us just jettison it. But many times we just pick everything and swallow everything and begin to come to Nigeria and begin to do all kinds of things. This is not what God is calling us to do. You must pray for your priest to stand the ground in order to do what? Speak about the word of God. Look at what is happening in our nation today. The time of the apostles, you found that apostles were speaking. Governments were afraid of them because their voice was a voice of reason. When they speak, the kings hear them. When they actually, government, they actually obey the voice of the priest because they are powered by the power of the Holy Spirit. Pray for your priests that they may not fail in their assignment. You can hear the condemnation of Jesus to us. Do not rejoice. Many priests you know that are weak today. Pray for them. Ask God strengthen them. Ask God empower them. Ask God comfort them. Ask God to bless them. Ask God to shepherd them. Ask God to fill them with all the treasures of heaven. Ask them to ask God that to help them never to com be confused. May they remain strong and stable. The stability of the priest is the stability of the community. The stability of the priest is the stability of the community. You may not lie for the wisdom's face. The time will come when you will enjoy what we are doing. You will miss it and you will say, oh, when Father Wisdom was there, this is what he was doing. It is for your good. Everything we are doing, we are praying for priests that the Lord may strengthen our arms. The Lord may establish our feet. That every word that we say, let the Lord honor it in the name of Jesus. Look at the second reading. The church in Thessalonica, they actually embarrassed Paul. Paul began to explain to them line upon line his mandate, his assignment. That when we came to you, we came with all tenderness. The priest is to actually become a father. There are many sides to the priest. To you, he might be a friend. To you, he might be a pastor. To you, he might be a father. To you, he might be a counselor. To you, he might be a guide. And to you, he might be the healer. To you, he might be a shepherd. There are many sides to the priest. To the one you ascribe to you will receive the grace of the Lord. I pray for you, church, our lady star of the sea. Pray for me. Pray for Fadonia. Pray for Monsano Gabriel Osu. You can see Monsano as a man who is even in his old age and in his sickness. He's still what standing and shown as an example. You must pray for our priests. Ask God to strengthen us. Ask God to bless us. Ask God to empower us. Ask God to enclose us. To be Pure us with what the gift of the Holy Spirit that our lives may become what a beauty and a wonder to many people in the name of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, St. Paul is a clear example that balances the first reading and the second reading in a style of leadership. He began to explain to the church in Thessalonica, this is our assignment. This is what God has asked us to do. And we have come to you to preach the word of God. We have not come to show any kind of carnal intelligence. We have come to ask, tell you that there is a face that the Lord is looking for. He's asking, he's looking for a particular heart. The heart that fears God. The heart that honors God. The heart that always has, gives honor to the Lord. The Lord is asking you and I, every day of our life, pray for your priests that they may not fail. And as we rise to, our, to the occasion of what the mantle that God has given to us, to this particular mandate, may we continue to be filled with more favor, filled with more grace, filled with more unction, filled with more zeal, filled with more passion, filled with more knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to do the works of the Lord now and forever through Christ our Lord. Bow your heads and meditate on what you have heard. The priest is called to be a minister and to speak the truth. The priest is called to preach the gospel message in all clarity. The priest is not to bring about his own glory, but the glory of the Lord. He is called to serve God in man. The priest is to proclaim the word of God boldly. There are oppositions that will come, but he is not to mind them like St. Paul, but to focus his attention on the work of God. That at the end of this exercise, glory awaits him. That the blessings of the Lord may multiply in his life. That the joy of the Lord may be his strength always. That he is a father who supports. Is a father who sustains. Is a father who holds, who lifts up, who relieves, who eases pain, who consoles. He guides, he directs, he teaches. This is the assignment of the priest. And we pray that the Lord in his mercy may help us. 
be diligent in this spiritual assignment given to us so that the people of God may be satisfied. We make all this prayer through Christ our Lord. May we rise now and profess our faith.